continuing story of Peyton Place. This is Lola Albright. I will be playing the part of Constance McKenzie until the return of Dorothy Malone. Tonight starring Lola Albright as Constance McKenzie, Ed Nelson as Michael Rossi, Mia Farrow as Allison McKenzie, Ryan O'Neill as Rodney Harrington, Barbara Parkins as Betty Anderson, Tim O'Connor as Elliot Carson, Christopher Conley as Norman Harrington. The difficult job of impaneling impartial, unprejudiced jurors for Rodney Harrington's trial continues. The unnerving process has been grinding along since the court convened several hours ago. Mr. Schiller, what is your business or profession? I'm a safety inspector for the railroad. Where in the county do you reside? Peyton Place. How long have you lived here? Oh, almost 15 years. Are you married, Mr. Schiller? Yes. Any children? One. Son. Well, how old, may I ask? My son is 21. Do you feel that you might have any um, compunctions about convicting a young man approximately the same age as your son? Objection, Your Honor. Sustain. Strike that question. Please disregard that question, Mr. Schiller. Ed, you have any I gotta get some air. Stay here, Norman. Look, I've gotta get out of here. There, Your Honor. Mr. Schiller, you understand that an indictment is merely a piece of paper constituting an accusation, and that the defendant is presumed innocent until the evidence establishes that the defendant is guilty beyond a reasonable doubt, and to a moral certainty. Yes, I understand that. Well, you understand that the defendant is not required to testify. <clears throat> yes, of course. Will you excuse me one moment, Mr. Schiller? I'm not sure, but if it's the, the same Schiller, I think I know his son. Good or bad? Well, I'm not positive. Counsel for the defense will kindly resume questioning the juror. Yes, Your Honor. Is it the same one? Bad. No further questions, Your Honor. Satisfactory to the people, Your Honor? Your Honor, the defense wishes to exercise his next peremptory challenge. You're excused, Mr. Schiller. May I ask why I've been excused, Your Honor? No, you may not, Mr. Schiller. The defense attorneys allowed to disqualify 20 jurors for peremp preemptory reasons. And don't ask me what that means. That'll take about a year. And then there'll be challenges for a cause, challenges for coffee breaks, challenges for challenges. Norm, I told the pharmacist I'd be back in a minute. That was five minutes ago. It's just mealy mouse, horse and buggy stuff. That's all the judicial system is. Whatever happened to swift justice? There's nothing we can do, Norm. Look, it's a game called stacking the deck. It's a hoax, that's all. Stephen said he's gonna try and get more women on the jury than men. Why? He said that women are more suspicious of other women. And he wants them to be suspicious of a woman named Stella Chernick. And Fowler. Well, he's gonna try and get men on the jury. It's a hoax. Right, George? And the college-educated, deep-thinking types are ducking jury duty because they're too busy and too smart to leave their good, important jobs in exchange for $5 a day. I don't blame you. I'd be embarrassed too, George.
what can I do to make them hurry up? What can I do to make him hurry up? Oh. When in the course of human events it becomes necessary to do something drastic. trying to roast my brother over a slow fire. I'd pick at the place. If it wasn't your brother, I'd... I'm sorry. Do you think our world's gonna be any better? And wiser. And more honest. And more loving. Am I gonna see you tonight? Why don't you go back in there now? Tell Stephen to hurry up and scratch the bad ones and get that jury box filled with good people. yours, Harry. Yes, I will tell him. Mom? Harry Olson from X-Ray just called. Urgent? Is it ever with Harry? Do you want me to get him on the extension? Hmm? Do you want me to call Harry Olson? Yes, please. Your desk was a lot neater that first day. So what? So what? So what's wrong? Well, you're going to fire me, aren't you? No. Don't you jump when His Majesty says jump? Jump? Nobody puts any pressure on me. I take orders from Dr. Morton because he's the chief of staff, from the board of directors because they run this hospital. Martin Payton wants me fired. Doesn't he? I don't know. I suppose he was getting around to suggest something like that when I walked out on him. Another day down the drain. I suppose I'll have to stay here and work again late tonight. You're not going to fire me? Mike. Thank you. Uh, how about a rain check? On that dinner that I turned down the other day. Why? Because I'm not going to fire you. No, not just because. You hate garlic? Love it. You're not going to hold me to that steak and wine dinner, are you? No. Well, that doesn't happen very often, but every now and then I get an attack, and the only thing that will cure it is a dose of a, of a big Italian dinner. Oh, that sounds fine. All right, when we get through here tonight at the salt mine, I'll give you 45 minutes to go home and get dressed. 45 minutes? 35 minutes. 35 minutes? It takes me 15 minutes just to get home. Well, all right, then I've been having this attack all day. Uh... 
I'll be ready. Sir. From Katie. Katie Seawald. Seawald. She's the girl who had the motor scooter. I fell off the time I broke my arm. Katie Seawald. Please do not let my daughter near your motor scooter again. <laughs> oh, it'll be nice to be home. I know. We can't wait. We. You always use the royal we. You in the house, I suppose. I used to think it might be nice to have a, an uncle or a brother or somebody. But not anymore. I'm, I miss our house, just the two of us. Very New England. You knitting and me reading Robert Frost or uh, writing my poetry. Well, I'll, uh, I'll have these addresses for you tomorrow, dear. And uh, if you get some of these thank you notes written while you're in the hospital, then you'll have more time home to spend with me. Mother, did I say something wrong? Oh, no, darling, of course you didn't. You are going to stay a little while longer. Come in. Hello, Hello Mr. Clark. How are you doing, Trooper? Fine. Look, I'll, I'll let you two talk. Yeah. Connie. Oh, hello, Mark. Yeah, I wasn't asleep. No, no, Eli's in there with her. I thought I'd leave them alone for a while. This morning, Allison asked me if she could have a radio in her room. I had to do some fancy double talking to change the subject. Well, she's bound to find out about the trial sooner or later. Maybe we ought to tell her. Yeah, maybe we should. We'll see what happens in the next few days. I thought you'd like it. <laughs> oh, yes. Thank you. You shouldn't have gone to all that trouble. No, I can't think of a better way to spend my time. Oh. Remember the one you made for me when I had the measles? You'd crank it up, it would walk all the way around the room. I, I, <laughs> What'd you call that one? A thingamajig. Thing. That was ten years ago, but a lot fancier than this one. You know, to tell you the truth, I was a little afraid you might be so grown up you wouldn't enjoy this kind of foolishness. Oh, no, Mr. Clark. Never. Not me. Good for you. <laughs> Here, give it a go. Yes. Oh. oh, I broke it. Oh, now I can put it back together in an hour. There's nothing to worry about. I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to break it. I know that you didn't mean it. It was beautiful. I loved it. Now it's ruined. Now, look here. You're behaving like a spoiled child. Do you want me to fix this, or do you want to lie there and mope about it? I want you to fix it, please. If you have time. That's better. I'll be back tomorrow. Mr. Carson, thank you, Miss. You know, I wouldn't do it if I didn't enjoy it. a jig for her, and it fell apart the first time she dropped it. Just like any store-bought toy. No excuse. Did she remember anything more? As far as she's concerned, I'm just a nice old man that makes thingamajigs for her. But the important thing is, she's alive, and she's getting stronger. Let's go. How did you reside? Peyton Place. Uh, what is your profession? I'm an accountant. I see Stevens been busy. There's some new faces in the jury box. Well, do you feel free in your mind and your conscience to serve on a jury in a case that involves people you have undoubtedly seen off and on over a period of years? Yes. I'm accustomed to dealing with facts, not personalities. How long have you lived in this city? All my life. 
41 years to be exact. Mr. West, you have no illness that would interfere with or interrupt your serving as a juror? I'm in excellent health. And it wouldn't be a hardship on your business to serve as a juror on this case, if you were selected? Oh, no. As a matter of fact, this is my vacation time. Your vacation? Yes, sir. Are you married, Mr. West? Yes. Children? Yes, two. Well, then I suppose it would only be fair to presume that you discuss the case with business acquaintances, friends. No. As a matter of fact, I haven't. I am very busy during the day. And at night, and by the time the kids are in bed. You never discussed it with your wife? No. Now, we have many things that need talking about. And sometimes I bring work home. It's very admirable of you, Mr. West. To sacrifice the vacation time you could be spending with your wife and two children to perform a public service like jury duty? They must be very proud. I presume you have a very successful business, Mr. West. No. I just have a modest business. And in this business, you've never had any dealings with the Peyton Mill or the Harrington family? No. No, it is possible to earn a living in this community without having to do business with... But them. only a modest living? Isn't that what you said, Mr. West? That's right. Not like you. I don't take their filthy money like you do. How they think they can get away with everything in this town. And I've seen them do it. Mr. West! I've watched them do it. You will be silent, Mr. West. They're not going to get away with it this time. You Harringtons! You Harringtons are not going to get away with murder! Not this time! Bailiff, remove Mr. West immediately. Order in the court! Order in the court! entertain a motion to dismiss these prospective jurors on the grounds that they have been exposed to this regrettable outburst. Counsel for the defense. May I consult with my client, Your Honor? You may. What do you think, Stephen? I think we should go with this jury. West's outburst could have gotten sympathy for you. That's a guess. The judge is obviously upset. Let's ride this out with him for a while. You're taking a big chance, Stephen. I'd move for another jury. And another, and another, till we find one that hasn't heard of Elizabeth Carson's murder. The counsel for the defense does not wish to make a motion to dismiss the prospective jurors, Your Honor. Nor does counsel for the people, Your Honor. The court admonishes each of you to carefully and honestly examine his conscience. And if you find the slightest doubt or bias or prejudice against the defendant because of what was said in this courtroom, then the court does in fact implore you to do honor to yourselves and to the judicial system that brings us here by voluntarily excusing yourself from serving in this trial. Very well. And the court does instruct you in fact to disregard everything said here by Mr. West. Once you are sworn in as jurors, you will arrive at a free and independent decision based on the facts presented in this courtroom, and only the facts. If there are no further dealings before the court this day, the court is Score adjourned one for our side. at 10 a.m. Are you sure, Stephen? Mr. West lost control. 
He's building it. Maybe there's another Mr. West in there, one who can hold his temper right up to the verdict. Twelve good men and true. Women are usually more objective than men, believe it or not. You did a good job of challenging, Stephen. Mr. Fowler? Of course. See you tomorrow. You ever stop smiling? No. If Jessup had been on the bench longer, we'd have a better idea of how to approach him. He's as much of an unknown as a jury at this point. Don't approach a judge at all. I wonder what that is. That's probably his laundry list. He belongs to the Vagabond Club. I understand there's a big dance at the end tonight. Two to one, he's picking up his tux at the cleaners. You're on. We'll check the society column tomorrow. You know something, that, that man is going to determine my life. You two stand here making bets on his social calendar. What about me? What are my chances? Counselor? Dad? Go take us. See you later. Shall we go to the office? I've been brainwashed. I'm supposed to think that Stephen Cord wrote the Bible. That's all the thinking I'm allowed to do. Watch this. I'll whistle and it'll come over. How about... How about that? Mr. Harrington? Yeah? Mr. Payton expects you for dinner at 6.30 sharp. Me? Yes. I'm Norman, you know. Yes, I know. Tonight? Tonight. I'll have the car here at 6.20. Sir. Look, don't bother. I've got my own set of wheels. I might need a getaway car. Thomas didn't have much of a sense of humor. Neither does Grandfather Peyton. Relax. Preview from the continuing story of Peyton Place. Some papers for Mr. Schuster. Well, don't worry, Julie. I'm not going to grab them out of your hands and read them under the nearest street lamp. All your life you've expected people to bend over backwards for you, haven't you? used to getting your own way, and you don't care how inconvenient it is. That's not true. Why do you continue to defend your father, Norman? He has nothing left. He has us.